6 October 2020, and I'm joined by my new guest, Anesu Ishe Black Musungwa. How are you, sir? How are you, Mr. Gambakwe, and uh, how are you, viewers and listeners? Okay, fantastic. And um, Thank you for having me today. Yes, that's fantastic. So today we want to go straight into the topic, which is the exciting news that we just received that Tanzania has been awarded or has been recognized as a lower middle income country. Do you at least give us like a, a, a short description of what this means if a country is a lower middle income country? Okay, uh, firstly, I would want to clearly say uh, that the classifications usually comes from um, the World Bank and uh, the Western countries, of course, we all know that the Western countries are the ones who control uh, the World Bank. And uh, the World Bank used the national, the gross national income per capita against the threshold of the inflation of the country to, to, to do the, 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 the classification of Tanzania as a, uh, as a lower middle income country. But of course, uh, I, I say congratulations to Tanzania because uh, this is such a uh, wonderful achievement, especially for, a, for an African country. Uh, we, we, we should also be inspired as Zimbabweans because uh, the, way, the, the, the position that Tanzania has been classified as uh, it gives us also as Zimbabweans an opportunity to actually reflect on ourselves. And, uh, the ways to watch, to also work on our countries so that we can uh, reach there. For, of course, uh, it, were, it, it was very obvious that uh, Tanzania was going to uh, to be classified under that because uh, the, the, the mining industry has been doing well. Uh, their manufacturing industry has also been doing well. They have been doing well on trade. They uh, export 50% of their gold uh, to, to other countries. Yeah. So uh, it, it, it wasn't shocking to me, knowing okay. how Tanzania so, operates as a country. Okay. So I want to take you through some statistics. Then I want us to discuss further. So the gross national income of Tanzania is now 1080 per capita, up from $622 in five years. Magufuli has doubled the GDP to 60 billion. Tanzania is a transit hub surrounded by eight landlocked countries. And the new status is going to boost their credit worthiness. And also, it is going to bring them a lot of investment. Is there any other benefits of having such a status of a lower middle income country? Uh, okay. Uh, firstly, uh, I, I would want to say uh, being given the status of uh, a lower middle income economy does not mean that the country uh, is actually resolved all, all the uh, political, social and economic issues. Like, uh, for example, there are, indicate, there are still in indicators that, that, that are still used uh, to, di to differentiate from other countries. Like, uh, for, for example, uh, the country is still, is still other, three quarters of the population of the country is in rural areas, and uh, other people are still in poverty. And uh, we also look at uh, uh, the, the, the few people who are benefiting from the development because uh, when we're talking about uh, development, we're not only talking about a uh, few people benefiting, we're talking about uh, physical de development and human development in most cases. We're not only talking about uh, development of a few individuals. It should be inclusive in nature. It should not, uh, it should not, it should uh, show a little bit of fairness. It should not benefit a, 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 little, a few people. So okay. uh, my, 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 I think uh, you've got a, a great point there. I want to stop you there and I want to go to the developments because I want people to know what is on the ground. 
So the, uh, okay. the developments that have happened in, in, in Tanzania, they include the massive tourist, uh, tourism attractions like the Kilimanjaro. And Tanzania is building yeah. the three billion dollars Julius Nyerere hydroelectric dam. They are building yeah. the three billion standard gauge railway. They are expanding the Dar es Salaam, Tanga, and Umara ports. And as you know, Tanzania is surrounded by eight landlocked countries. And all of these countries are using Tanzania as a transit port. So it's a hub. They are building a 30 billion uh, LLGP gas, uh, uh, um, natural gas plant at a place called Likongo, Muchinga. And they are partnering with Uganda on a $3 billion US dollars oil pipeline. Do you think these are inclusive according to your definition? Okay, according uh, to, to, to the definition of inclusivity, I think I clearly highlighted that they should be uh, human, human inclusion and also physical uh, inclusion between all classes. Because uh, uh, if you really follow uh, Tan Tan Tanzanian news, you realize that Tanzania is also facing issues to do with electricity, same with the uh, electricity issues uh, which are being faced here in Zimbabwe and they are facing electricity they also face uh, climate is issues like uh, for, for example they use hydroelectricity and uh, by, 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 but we, we have to appreciate the fact that they are trying to work hard they are putting macro economic policies and fiscal policies to ensure that and to, 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 to ensure that uh, the, 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 their country achieves prosperity I think that is the most important, but not to say that they have actually dealt with all the problems that they are facing as a nation. Okay. Now, I want to take it from where you have left it, and I want to go to reforms, because reforms will make sure that they move closer to fixing their problems. The, the okay. reason why Tanzania has managed to, to become a lower income lower middle income country is because of the reforms. For example, they've removed tax from small scale miners. So all the withholding taxes and all the other taxes, they've been removed. Magufuli withdrew licenses from non-performing investors. So that is big investors. And he gave these mining concessions to 5,000 small scale miners. Then he did something great, which was to build a wall around the Tanzanite city called Mireni. So Mireni is a place where they mine these very special uh, minerals, rocks. They put a wall around the whole city. And because of this productivity in that area increased, increased by double. And then there's also a billionaire who came, who came from there. And this is called Sininu Liza. This, this billionaire arose from this action. You can imagine in Zimbabwe if there was a billionaire from mining. At the moment, there's no billionaire. Do you think these reforms contributed or they were just a, a small part in this uh, achievement? Of course, of course, uh, it would be unjust if I say the reforms did did not contribute to uh, to the success. Of course, uh, the, the the reforms which they put, especially uh, the creation of a, of a feasible business environment and cutting of taxes, uh, no doubt, uh, under such reforms, any country will, would develop. And I uh, would like to congratulate the president for for, for, for President John Magufuli for ensuring uh, that the, the, for putting place the uh, macro economic policies and fiscal policies uh, to, to, to ensure that he focuses on the priority. He, he knows that his country uh, main economy is uh, mainly based on mining, which is 50% uh, of uh, the country's exports. So what he does, he focuses on the priorities 
priorities priorities such as uh, mining industry which includes the mining of gemstones the mining of gold the mining of many minerals and also agriculture uh, where by three uh, three quarters of the population of the country uh, depend they depend mainly on agriculture but also uh, yeah it's an achievement though though it's not it's not inclusive in nature in the sense that a few people are benefiting from uh, from, from the elite if I, if i may say yeah okay and i agree with you if there's a multi billionaire it means one person has benefited a lot from this uh, this development however i want to go and i want to conclude with these benefits tanzania is now one of the top 5 gold producers in africa they've managed to attract 1 billion us dollars in foreign direct investment and manufacturing has grown in cement textiles tools and machinery and agriculture is slowly increasing at the moment agriculture as you said more than 50% of the population rely on agriculture but agriculture had fallen it had not improved under the previous administration now i want to end with the, a question on zimbabwe what do you okay. think could happen in zimbabwe uh, president munangagwa has set a target of 2030 for zimbabwe to become a lower middle income country is that achievable given the situation in zimbabwe what are the factors that could make zimbabwe reach the same status <laughs> okay uh firstly i would, I would want to say uh, a plethora of volumes of literature have looked on on this uh, question which you have asked me and um, it is multifaceted uh, in its own nature but i would like to say uh, uh in in starting maybe from uh, from democracy uh, what is democracy the, the, the democracy is a, is has got a lot of definitions but uh po, it seems like in zimbabwe there is uh, uh, political issues there is also social issues and there is also economic issues political issues starting from the respect of the rule of law because when you find someone not respecting the outcome of election that's a powerful indication of uh, of not respecting the democracy though i i may not want to delve in why the person is rejecting maybe why why that person is rejecting maybe the uh, the, the election results but also uh, looking at uh, I, i think it is achievable in zimbabwe if they put the feasible most possible macro economic policies as the government should survive uh she should should survive according to its means and also they should do a work towards increasing revenue fiscal co- consolidation is also is also important uh, especially putting safety nets in this period where we are facing the covid-19 also is also important and uh, bringing maybe technocrats and people with 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 the know of the economy especially especially young people who are eager for change that's why that's what i think can actually uh it will us to solve uh, to, to solve our, our country but trust me uh, this topic needs me needs a whole day because i would <laughs> lot of ideas which <laughs> we which can actually help to solve our economy okay i i'm very happy and unfortunately i don't i don't want us to make this long i want us to put this on whatsapp because as you know zimbabwe has got a problem of data access and i think this is one thing that is bringing back our development access to data uh so before i close i want to ask you to briefly tell the audience about yourself we are going to be having you here every week people will get to know your views who is anesuishe black musungwa okay uh okay anesuishe uh, black musungwa is a young man with an authentic personality who always delivers uh, good results at everything that he does um anesuishe black musungwa uh he 
was from uh, Women's University in Africa. He studied a BSc honors degree in sociology. Uh, he, he held many for many po posts at university, some even political. Like uh, at Women's University, I was uh, the first uh, president for the club, Rotract Club, a club which has to do with helping the community. I was also uh, in Nectar's Zimbabwe president 2018. I also held uh, the post of the president for sports associations and entertainment from 2017 to 2019. I also held the Zimbabwe uh, universities, uh, universities uh, sports association uh, a post as a student president in the executive. I, also, I was also appointed in the executive of the International Federation of University Sports, so in abbreviation, which is called uh, FISU, and the, the first Zimbabwean to hold that post, among many other certificates, including the International Federation of University Sports Certificate, the African Student Association uh, Certificate of Leadership for the year 2018. Yeah. Wow, that's an amazing CV like right there. <laughs> I like it. And I hope that our audience are going to enjoy you being here. You know what I like about okay. the, the current situation in Zimbabwe? There is so much opportunity that we're facing. We're at the bottom mm. and many millionaires are going to arise when this current situation in Zimbabwe has been resolved. And if you place yourself and position yourself correctly, you are going to do very, very well. And I think this is a passing and difficult stage in our country's history, where we're going to look back and say, do you remember that time when things were so bad? Do, do you think that th there's hope for Zimbabwe? Yeah, I, th I, th I think there's actually hope for Zimbabwe, but uh, the problem with most Zimbabweans, they are they're actually they, they look at what a government can do for them. But from a personal perspective, I think we should look at what we can do for ourselves, which can benefit other people. Because uh, I've never seen any country whereby the government would just say we're giving money to everyone. But uh, it is proven historically that is the citizens, is the people who create opportunities, opportunities which benefits the 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 the, the whole nation and everyone across the globe. That's my perspective towards uh, personal uh, de development. I totally agree with you, and I think we should end it at this point. Is there anything else you want to say before we close? Okay. Uh, what, what what I would want to say, I would want to carry to encourage. Uh, every youth in Zimbabwe, I want to say to every youth that uh, we've got a purpose. And our purpose is to inspire others, is to inspire the world, is to come up with creative ideas. Creativity is the only way which we can actually use these days to actually, to actually achieve success. Because you find out uh, most of the time, we were, we were created with a dependency syndrome mindset whereby one goes to school and say, ah, maybe in the future I want, uh, I want to work for this person and this person and this person. Why can, can't you come with your own creative idea to create, to create employment? Why can't you partner with other people of your generation and come up with very innovative ideas which can actually help to transform this world? Is it a difficult thing? Personally, I think it's not a difficult thing. Okay, that was amazing. And uh, for everyone who's watching, you can follow Anesuishe Black Msungwa on his social media platforms, and you can also WhatsApp him on the number that is on the screen. Thank you very much for joining me this week, Anesuishe. And I hope that we'll be having these kind of discussions every week. Very beneficial and very interesting. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Kambakwe.